The biggest problem we have right now is we just got to be consistent in all phases of the game. Some days, some things we do, we're doing very well. And then the next week, we might drop off in that area and something else comes up. I could blame it on you, but I think you can only be young so long. I think we've got to, you know, I think I've got to do a better job maybe in the fact that they're going to discipline them a little tougher maybe. I don't know. But uh, I think they know it. I think the schemes we have are good. I think the ability to do some things we have is certainly competitive, and we just got to keep keep pecking away at it. We've lost a one ball game to, an, to one of the better teams in the country. And the Nittany Lions had one non-conference game remaining before starting Big Ten play, and they were hoping to fine-tune a lot of things against an Eastern Michigan team that came out throwing on their first four plays. A bit of a surprise considering they had the sixth best running game in the country. Although Devin still and company, let it be known early, those yards would be tough to come by. The give to Olds on the reverse, on the double reverse, it goes to Allen, slipped out by Penn State and dropped for a loss. Jack Crawford with Devin still. Four yard loss on the play. Gillette, pump fakes, now looks left, right, fumbles the football, it's on the turf. Penn State recovers. And this is good team defense. The defensive line finally broke down the protection by Eastern Michigan. The secondary initially held coverage, and then Lattimore causes the fumble. Rob Bolden started at quarterback for Penn State, and he got the Lions rolling in what would be their best passing game of the young season. And while 95,000-plus baked in the sunlight, Silas Red shaked and baked through the Eagles' defense. It wouldn't be the last Penn State scoring drive of the day set up by a turnover. The Nittany Lions got as far as the Eastern Michigan nine-yard line with a diversified attack, and it set them up for the first points of the day. Could be fourth down. I think we'll see Anthony Farah attempt his first field goal put down by Kaiser, kicked by Farah's up, and the kick by Farah is good, and Penn State leads it 3 nothing. Gillette hit by Stupar. Gillette thrown down the 40-yard line. Stupar from the backside on the blitz. Boy, Stupar does a good job of timing it up off the edge. Penn State's defense picked up right where they left off from a great performance against Temple. 13 times they would throw the Eagles for a loss in the game, and the aggression spilled over to special teams. Here they come. Oh, and Willis got a piece of it. Willis got a piece of it at the 50, the 45, the second partial block of a punt this year for the Nittany Lions. Special teams coming through for PSU. Loin, the junior from Scranton, Pennsylvania, is the quarterback now for Penn State for the first time today. He goes over the middle. It's caught by Zerba inside the 35, first down to the 32-yard line. Play action with Loin. Rolls right, throws it for Suey on the wheel route, got him, touchdown, Penn State. This is a good play action fake by McGloin. He holds everybody inside, they think it was a run, and that's an easy catch for the touchdown. Focused, poised, and prepared, Penn State's defense continued to romp around in the early autumn sunshine, making life miserable for Eastern Michigan quarterback Alex Gillette. Glenn Carson recovered a fumble, one of three turnovers the Nittany Lions forced in the first half. And it took just one play to get into Eagles territory as Matt McGloin hit Shawnee Kersey for 41 yards. Play action, McGloin looks for the end zone, throws, complete the sword, it's at the goal line. A touchback, touchback, he fumbled the ball out of bounds. Eastern Michigan getting the football. He will throw, they blitz, he steps up, he delivers deep downfield, Suke cuts it off the 45. Penn State in great position again because of its defense. One of the things Penn State wanted to improve on from a year ago was creating turnovers, and their defense has been ball hawking since the season started and with a little help from a guy who knows a thing or two about quarterbacking this time they took advantage of the takeaway Matt McGloin hit Davon Smith to the five and then he went one better throws in the end zone cut touchdown Penn State Derek Boyd they cash in the suitcase takeaway the Penn State Eastern Michigan highlights are presented by the Pennsylvania Propane Gas Association and your local propane service provider propane is reliable efficient and clean for more information, go to papropane.com. Propane, exceptional energy. Beaver Stadium was at full throttle, and so was the Nittany Lion offense as they started the second half with the football and with Rob Bolden at quarterback. His first pass was incomplete. His second more than made up for it. Rob in a straight drop. Steps up. 
throws is complete. Oh, Smith 30, 35, 40, far slide, 45, 50. There he goes. They'll never catch him. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Davon Smith, 71 yards. Okay, when he got to the sideline and he got a block from Derek Lloyd downfield, you knew it was over because there's nobody on that field who's going to catch Davon Smith that time. Bolden set down in the pocket. Offensive line gave him the time to throw the football. It was the longest reception of Smith's career and the longest pass play of the season for Penn State. Meanwhile, the defense continued to make still the Eagles offense, as in Devon still. Eastern Michigan came into the game averaging nearly 300 yards rushing, but Penn State's defense limited them to a fraction of that, and they smothered the passing game as well, as the Nittany Lions protected Beaver Stadium real estate with passion and purpose. But it was more than a bright day for Penn State's defense, as both quarterbacks contributed to one of the biggest passing days Penn State has ever had under Joe Paterno. Good throw by McGloin, put that ball on the line to Smith. First career 100-yard receiving game. Back goes Matt, McGloin steps up, dumps it off to Red in open field, cuts inside 25, go to 30, that was white, to the 35, over the 35, pinballs his way to the 40-yard line. I mean, in the secondary, he continues to make people miss, and he ended up breaking three or four tackles. Makes also a very good catch, it was low on the turf. Play action, McGloin, he throws, he's got Suey. So he spins for a first down. Despite the comfortable lead, the Nittany Lions continued to scratch and claw on every play, a sign of a maturing squad that used all of its parts. 13 different players caught passes, helping the offense pile up well over 400 yards. Play action, puff fake now, throws in the end zone, but Derek Moy turns around, he's got it. Touchdown, Penn State. Moy moved into third place on Penn State's all-time receiving yardage list, but more important, the offense had its most impressive performance of the season. The defense continued to play well despite losing Michael Motti and Danton Lynn to injury. Swallowed up and thrown down for a loss by Nathan Stupar. And Stupar's really stepped in for Motti today and has made a series of big plays. Oh, without a doubt. This was a total team win with plenty of glory to pass up and down the roster and on both sides of the football. To the edge, chased by Crawford, he'll keep it a go, hit by Ascarino and ripped out the five yard line. Drew Ascarino, the senior co-captain safety, played it perfectly. There has never been a perfect football game, but Penn State focused on the task at hand, not looking forward to the start of Big Ten play. Instead, they worked on being as prepared and sharp as possible for conference competition, which starts next week against Indiana.